एवरीवन वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन लेक्चर ऑफ व्हीकल टेस्टिंग एंड होमोलोगेशन आई एम मिलन त्रिवेदी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट एल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी बेसिकली इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विथ अवर Topic that is active and passive safety system. So in the last lecture we had already covered about the different active safety system. We had already discussed about the different advanced safety system, active safety system basically present in our existing particular automobile. In today's lecture we are going to focus on the second term that is a passive safety system. So let's begin with the concept of the passive safety system. Before going into the depth of that particular topic, passive safety system, we need to understand that this particular system is also called as a crash worthiness system because the major role of the passive safety system is to minimize the loss which actually happened after the accident. The active safety system plays a role just to avoid the accident, but once we are not in a position to avoid that particular accident, the accident has been happened, this particular passive safety system will try to minimize the loss which has actually been happening. out due to this particular accident that's loss particularly maybe in the terms of the loss to the particular automobile or to the loss to any of the particular occupant which is present in the car whether it is a driver co driver or the passenger which is sitting in the rear seats so that will try to minimize the loss which is actually happening to this particular occupant or the car body So let us understand which are the different passive safety system present in our automobile. The first crash worthiness system is the seat belt. Normally we treat the seat belt as a mandatory nowadays uh, this driver and the co-driver seat belt is very much required but this actually plays a role whenever there is accident it will just uh, take your body backwards as you are facing the sudden front collision your body would be lean forward due to the action of momentum but that can have a huge impact on the steering pad so this particularly seat belt will take your body towards back so it must have a proper tension in this particular belt as well as if you observe minutely it must have proper anchorages the belt which you are tightening at this particular anchorage that must be also working in a proper way so we need to ensure that the proper tension in the belt as well as the anchorages in whenever we are checking for the passive safety system the second crash worthiness system is about the airbag that we all know that this also become a mandatory part nowadays but initially it was not been considered as to provide the mandatory airbag it was just present in the optional version but as the front impact can produce a big damage which Uh, for just to avoid that particular damage we need to have this particular airbag but the time of opening of that particular airbag is plays playing a major role we need to have this proper opening of the bag at the time of collision up apart from that if you observe carefully the positioning of the airbag must be proper it must uh, actually cover our face properly so in such way it must be located so we need to ensure first of all the pressure requirement that how much pressure has been generated out of this particular airbag whether it is sufficient or not it must be in the proper position and the time of opening of the airbag so all these things actually comes under this particular passive safety system then that's why we try to just minimize the loss which is happening to the particular driver or nowadays co driver airbag is also available nowadays most of the cars are also coming up with the concept of the six airbags in which the rear occupant is also been pro protected the third passive safety system is the laminated windshield yes uh, this can be a major cause uh, suppose we are facing some accident and our windshield is broken out suppose it is uh, made up of that material glass material which is normally which we see in our windows or the glass doors so that kind of glass would be there then the fragments of that particular glass would be having a sharpened edges and that can actually may come a major destruction to this particular occupant so this particular laminated windshield will just broken out this glass in a number of different different fragments how does it composed if you take a just a layer of that it is just seen in this kind of three different layers that's why it is called as a laminated inside two glass we are having a vinyl layer so what will happen is 
suppose that is uh, broken off the glass outside of the vehicle so vinyl layer will not just uh, surpass that outside glass to the inside body of the vehicle as well as the glass would be broken out into the fragment form in the granules like form so that there is no sharp edges present in this particular glass and the minimum loss to the particular occupant the fourth one that is a crumple zone now this is again a very interesting parameter normally we uh, think like a scenario that the glass a whole vehicle is made up of a rigid body but sometimes it is not required if you take certain scenario like this in which the car body is colliding with the very heavy object in its front so what will happen due to this heavy to heavy metal contact the transmission of force would be received directly to this occupant which is sitting inside the car we need to have that particular minimum impact of that particular force in order to minimize that particular force we are making this front part of the vehicle made up of a crumple zone now what does this crumple zone indicate is whenever you are facing this kind of accident this crumple zone will break down very easily right that will just absorb all the vibrations and the force which is generating due to this front collision that will just break down but yes it will transfer minimum force to the occupant which is sitting inside this particular car right so we are making this kind of crumple zones just in order to transmit less force to this particular occupant the fifth one is a safety cell safety cell also comes under the passive safety system we are making a car body in a such a way that some of the car cross members or we call it as a pillars will safeguard the occupant which is sitting inside so from whenever the direction the force is coming due to the accident happening the less impact would be received to the car occupant right we are having that kind of a b and c types of pillars as well as door cross beam that all constitute to the safety cell of the vehicle the sixth one that is a side impact cross beam we are making a cross beam of very heavy material so that whenever there is a side impact from the door side impact uh, some collision is there so this will try to minimize this loss or the transmission of force would be less to the particular occupant so that is a side impact protection beams the seventh one is a collapsible steering column again this is a interesting parameter the column which is present beside this particular steering wheel we are handling the steering wheel now sudden certain collapse is there so what will happen is we will be move forward to this particular steering column now we are leaning forward to this particular steering column but the steering column is rigid so what actually it can happen is the steering column impact can be felt on this our chest portion and that can lead to a heavy impact and can lead to the fracture of this particular bone also so in order to minimize that particular thing we are having this concept of collapsible steering column instead of that hard impact what actually would happen is due to the force of our body the column which is present beside our steering would get collapse so we will have a cushion like of thing whenever we are leaning forward during the collision part right so how does this particular leaning happens that is due to the presence of the collapsible member it can have a, a nut type of member or it can have a sharp which can collapse very easily inside the column so that particular steering column would get collapsed and we will have a minimum impact on this our chest bone last in our crash worthiness system is a uh, cargo barriers again this comes under the passive safety system but nowadays in, in our indian cars basically we are not finding this kind of cargo barriers but this is very interesting concept that whenever whatever the components you are keeping in our cargo region some of the times if you apply a brake suddenly that particular barrier cargo material will lean forward and can come into this particular driver region as well and that can also lead to the major accident or can lead to major damage so in order to just minimize that particular thing we are keeping this kind of barriers 
in uh, in between this particular cargo region and the driver region so that all this cargo which is leaning forward that will stop at the cargo barrier region so that's all about the different passive safety system of our automobile now let us move to the next topic that is a wheel rim testing system we need to actually have a proper testing system for the wheel rims and this actually comes under the safety system part itself because if the wheel rim is broken during your driving condition then it can lead to a major damage your just vehicle would be dragged toward one of its side and it can even lead to the chances of roll over or any other heavy impact or heavy accident so we need to have proper testing of the wheel rims but in order to understand how the wheel rims are been tested we need to first of all analyze that which are the different forces which is act acting on the wheel rim normally the wheel rim is subjected to two different loads that is the radial or the cornering load based on that two theories we are testing the wheel rims so let us understand that particular topic in detail according to that two failures we are having two different test that is a radial fatigue test and the cornering fatigue test first of all let us evaluate the radial fatigue test in this particular radial fatigue test setup we are having a wheel which is actually pushed towards this kind of drum assembly right this drum would be rotating so that will drive this particular wheel also but the wheel is attached from the center of its shaft and the force is also applied from its center right from the second diagram also it is very clear that the wheel is actually hold it from the center position and it is pushed towards this particular roll which is spinning now this roll which is spinning can also be tilted at some of its degree so that is actually producing the real kind of scenario a such scenario in which we are having two angles two in two out angles that kind of scenario can be developed between this wheel and the rollers right the roller will be acting like a road surface right uh, we are pushing the wheel towards this particular road surface so naturally some of the force is actually acting on the wheel and we are getting the rotary motion through this drum but wheel is not in a straight position some of the times we are having this true angles camber angle caster angle that can also be developed by treating the position of this particular roller it can have a different angles right in the first sketch it is clearly visible that the roller is somewhat tilted so obviously the two kind of uh, angle would be felt at the wheel then the wheel is allowed the roller would spin so that will naturally spin the particular wheel apart from that we, from the center of the wheel the force has been applied along with that we are actually mounting the different kinds of sensor at the rim portion here you are observing that we are having a1 a2 a3 a4 b1 b2 b3 b4 these are the different load sensors this load sensors will give you the indication of how much force has been acting at the different different point of the particular entire wheel rim we can have a n number of different sensors so what is the value of load which is a filling at the different different surfaces would be evaluated all right and at that particular point after a number of spins if it is indicating somewhat higher value in any of the particular sensor part then the chances of failure at that particular point is higher so from that it can also be evaluated and if it is clearing the test that the load design load is meeting with the actual load during the experiment then the chances of failure would be less so such scenario would be there then the radial fatigue test would be passed the another method of testing or the another load which is acting on the wheel that is a cornering load how to evaluate this cornering load for that we are having this kind of setup in which at the top of the table the wheel would be mounted the wheel would be actually supported from the center of its arm and from that center itself we are actually applying a load with the help of the actuator now wheel would be allowed to spin with the help of this kind of electrical motor this electrical motor would be running so that will be connected with the different pulleys and it will drive the table on which the wheel is actually attached as the table would be spinning the wheel will also start to spin 
and from the center of the particular wheel we are applying a cornering force we are applying a force with the help of actuator so the wheel would be spinning and from the center we are applying a load we need to have idea that how much cornering force is been given at which the failure would start in order to evaluate the force which is act, uh, 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 particularly acting on the wheel rim we can attach different kind of load sensors as well right but in our curriculum we need to actually understand the particular setup and the procedure right so this is all about the cornering fitting test apart from this different different tests in the passive safety system this is one of the test wheel rim test in which we are having two different categories that's all about this today's lecture thanks for watching